Hello and welcome to this episode of Louisiana's Got Talent, a podcast brought to you by the Louisiana Board of Regents. I'm Commissioner of Higher Education, Kim Hunter-Reed. Delighted to be with all of you and delighted to be Louisiana's Chief uh, to Advocate for Talent Development. This podcast really is designed to showcase innovative actions, the kinds of policy and practice that allows us to make sure that more of Louisiana prospers. Uh, November is a special month for us. It's not only first generation month, but it's certainly a month where we honor our veterans and say thank you to people who have served our country uh, so honorably. And so for this special Veterans Day episode, we have three wonderful individuals with us who are serving as the Levette Corps Campus Navigators. So joining us is Greg Ludley from Gramlin State University. Uh, Tammy Armand from Fletcher, and Martin Motes from LSU Alexandria. These campus navigators help Louisiana student veterans in so many ways, large and small, through the Louisiana Department of Veterans Affairs LeVette Corps program. So campus navigators ensure that the campus is a safe and welcoming place for student veterans. They help to promote uh, education and opportunities and a veteran friendly attitude on campus. We're very excited that all of our uh, public post-secondary institutions have been recognized as veteran friendly through the governor's military veterans friendly campus designation again this year for the third year in a row. Uh, but these navigators are the individuals who help to make this possible. So Greg and Tammy and Marty, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thank you, Dr. Reed. So first of all, let me ask you about why did you get involved? Whoever wants to start, uh, Tammy, I guess we could start with you, ladies first, right? Tell me <laughs> why did you get involved in being a navigator? What does it mean for you? Hi, Dr. Reed. Um, the reason I got involved is in 2020, I lost my husband. He was a veteran. Um, he died from kidney disease. And I was looking for a purpose. What is my purpose now? I, you know, I go from being a full-time caretaker of my husband to it's just me now. I have no purpose. So I got involved with Fletcher. I'm um, going back for my degree. And Ms. Joy Limas, who was our navigator at the time, um, met me and found out the passion I had for veterans or our veterans. Um, my son is currently serving. My husband was a veteran. My father-in-law was a veteran. My grandfather was a veteran. So she told me about the program and she at that time was transitioning out. And she says, I think you would be perfect. And I saw what she was doing. And I said, you know what? I think I found my calling. I think Wonderful. this is my new passion. Excellent. How long ago was that? That was last year, it was my first year, and I'm in my second year as navigator at Fletcher, and we are thriving. We oh. have our number of veteran students that actually participate have gone up. Um, they come to me about just about anything. I mean, some of them's just to talk, some of them's with administration problems, some of them's admission issues, some of them's registration, you know, just simple little things, sometimes, sometimes more complex, but I love what I'm able to do for our veterans. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. And thank you for making that difference. And Greg, I know you also are making a difference uh, at Gramlin. Tell us about why you got involved. Well, hi, Dr. Reed. I actually got involved out of curiosity. Um, being a veteran myself, um, it was a long time ago in 2014, I started to try to apply for my own benefits. And like many veterans, usually you get the denied many times and you have to try over and over and over again. And I heard about the program and they were looking for someone <laughs> somewhat of age or <laughs> season more or less. And uh, it seemed to be a good fit. And uh, just like Tammy said, I found my purpose after yeah. having uh, gone through that first year of, uh, of training. And I, they said, one of the trainers said, if you've been in the service any period of time, six months or more, you're eligible for something. And a light came on. And from that, I started working on my own benefits because I had another vehicle to work from. And up to this, at present, I, I'm 90%. And I probably never would have gotten that had I not known about this program. Wonderful. Well, thank you. And Martin, I know you served 20 years in active duty in both Marines and the Army. So thank you for your service. Um, and as a retired veteran, tell me about why you wanted to get involved. 
No, thank you, Dr. Reed. Um, I, I just remember during my uh, 20 years, I, I, there were always people providing us assistance on active duty. Um, a lot of times it may have just been um, just filling the gaps that sometimes the military isn't really equipped to provide, um, whether it's mental health issues or even just uh, when I was, you know, I would come back from deployment and there will always be this little lady at the, on the tarmac, you know, just giving soldiers a hug as they got off the plane. And it really meant a lot to, to me as a soldier. So I wanted to kind of give back to doing that. Once I retired, I became a contractor. Once I was no longer a contractor, um, I realized that uh, through my own struggles and issues, I really didn't work well outside of the military community. Um, and this is actually, it's kind of been twofold. I can give back to those veterans as they come off of active duty and come into a college environment. And it also helps me integrate with uh, others as well. And um, as a navigator, I can do both of those missions at once. That's excellent, excellent. So you talked about giving back and you talked about helping in small and large ways. Um, Greg, I wanna start with you and think about the student veterans who are returning to school and what does military friendly service uh, mean to them? What does the campus provide and how are you helping veterans and their families to succeed? Well, Dr. Reed, as a gist, I look at our situation here as we're that link to that period of transition. Uh, many veterans come in, they mostly are non-traditional students, but we do have some veteran dependents and spouses. But for the most part, they come in from the military way of living. And it takes some time and effort and some help to transition to that academic world. And that's what we're here for. We're that link or that, um, that person that they have as an advocate. Because when I got out of the military, had I had a, a navigator to come to me and say, hey, as soon as you get out, you need to do these things, one, two, three, four, uh, life may have been a little bit easier for me. So after having received what I have received, I'm willing to give back and make sure other veterans don't have to struggle like I had to get benefits, to be able to uh, navigate through that educational process a little bit better. I always say a uh, school certifying officer gets them in school. It's our job to make sure they graduate. Well said, well said. So Martin, I want you to build on that. Um, obviously it's important that you have a navigator. I'm curious about how many people want a navigator or how many people want to do it on their own. What do you, what's, what is your experience? Um, in my experience, um, they, by the time they get to us, they want a navigator. That's for certain. Um, there's always going to be issues. There's always something different that happens, no matter what school you go to. Um, the biggest thing we can provide for them is they're going to come to us with specific questions, and we're going to have the answers to those questions generally. But where our strength really lies as navigators is being able to rely on all the other navigators in the state. Um, because none of us know everything about what we do. We, you know, we get training and generally that training gives us a general overview, but most of our navigators, they kind of have more of a specific knowledge on a lot of things. We can always go to them. So we, and cause we all have our own experience. Um, but I think, like I said, by the time they get to us, I think they're glad we're here. That's great. Tammy, I'm curious from your perspective, um, like what kinds of, what, what sticks out when you think about, I'm glad I'm a navigator, navigator because, and you fill in the blank, what, what experience comes to you? Um, just being able to help our students with their registration, finding their benefits. Um, a lot of them don't know what benefits are available to them still. Um, mm -hmm. They come to me and say, especially the dependents and the spouses, what am I eligible for? Can I go to school? Does it pay for me to go to school? Um, it's, it's very difficult if you don't know, because unless you search out, you're not going to find, well, that's our job is to give them that information. They're searching for a way. So we need to give them the information on how they can get their school paid for, get a stipend to live on while they're in school, um, get their registration done, get their, um, I have helped with tutoring. I help, um, we have military, um, 
friendly registration where students can come priority register for school before everybody else that way they get in their classes that they want. Um, it just, it means a lot to have that avenue for them to get the answers they want. And I, like the other navigators, we don't stop if we don't know the answer. We search out the answers. We use whatever resources is available to us to find the answers that the everyday soldier could not find. That's great. And I, and I love how each of you have put it about being the link, about helping them to understand what's available to them. But also, Greg, your point about not just getting them in, but getting them across that commencement stage, how important yes. that is and how life changing it is. Yes. So we know that um, transitioning can be challenging and just navigating education and the academic environment can be cha challenging. But we also know that mental health can be a significant concern, um, not just to veterans, but to all students. And certainly we've seen more and more of that in the pandemic. But certainly we know veteran mental health is a national issue. Um, I'm reading a stat that 11 to 20% of veterans experience PTSD in a given year, uh, according to NAMI, and suicide rates are at an all time high, unfortunately. So we know that not all wounds are visible wounds, uh, but we do know that uh, resources must be available to help individuals to navigate. So I'm curious about what you see in terms of help for veterans in the mental health area and what more do we need to do? Who wants to start on that? Martin, do you want to start? Um, I will actually. This is actually a, a, a very, um, hits kind of close to home myself. Um, we see a lot of mental health issues, um, you know, even among our normal students, um, but veterans especially. And, and having somewhere to go for them that can provide for that is important, not just in a, like the sense of therapy, but even other veterans, just having a person who has a shared experience to talk to um, is extremely important. Um, I, I, it's very hard for me to kind of talk about it, but uh, we have, we've had issues with students who um, just don't have a hard time uh, just, just being around other students. Cause like you said, they're, they're veterans are non-traditional students. They're not, they don't exactly know how to act around normal students, normal students. Uh, so sometimes you, they just need somebody that can um, just walk alongside them and, and to help them fit in a little bit better and to bounce ideas off of. That's great. And I know you all have a special space for them. How is that helping? Oh, it's, I think it's, it's very instrumental. Um, having a place where a veteran can go, especially for a veteran who may be on the verge of some kind of a crisis, just to have a place where he can be by himself and to talk to maybe talk to a peer, um, you know, out of the hustle and bustle of campus is, you know, they're more comfortable um, and they're more apt to talk to another veteran than someone else. That's great. And thank you for sharing. I know that can be difficult, but I do think that there is, um, it's important as you all have said that people know they're not alone. They don't walk this journey alone, no matter how challenging or traumatic it may be. And so I, I appreciate you Marty sharing that and also pointing out that it's hard to talk about, right? It's hard to talk about, but it's also hard for people to, to sort of walk through it and see um, opportunity and, and, and wellness on the other side. So Tammy, talk to me about what services are available and what do you see? Um, in our, in for Fletcher, we actually have a licensed professional counselor that is on staff. Um, she's certified in trauma response, CBT and DBT. And she's also an, L, an LPC supervisor. So if I have a veteran come to me and I've had it recently um, and they're having a hard time and I can't provide the help they need by just listening, I always refer them to her. Um, if they don't wanna to talk to her for some reason, we work with um, South Louisiana <clears throat> Mental Health here and they're gladly ready to take any of our veterans in and get them the help they need. But most of the time, just a simple conversation with them, letting them know you care, you appreciate what they've done, you're there for them. Even though I'm not a veteran myself, I'm only the spouse of a veteran. Sometimes that's all they need is somebody to listen and somebody to be there for them. And, I try to be there for all of my, my phone is available to my students 24 hours a day. I have students call me at six, seven, eight o'clock at night sometimes. 
If they're having a crisis, I'd rather them call me than them become a statistic. So I get them what help they need and get them, if it's needed, I even have the 988 number ready for them for suicide prevention to help them. I'm actually a member of the American Suicide uh, Prevention um, group myself and we our veteran center participated in a walk this year and Ray, we were the vet team was the biggest fundraiser for that suicide prevention walk this year wow in our area. thank you fantastic thank you so much for sharing that and and what about uh, from the Gramlin perspective in terms of health services available well at the Gramlin State University where we have a, a comprehensive counseling center that is headed up by Dr. Colleen Speed, and she has three licensed counselors on staff at all times. Um, I have not actually had the experience of having to deal with a veteran in crisis, in mental crisis, more or less. However, we have several other avenues that we explore if the counseling center is not quite the situation that that veteran needs. I'm always available. I'm not a therapist, but just like Tammy said, uh, that listening ear. Our, our veteran center is equipped where we have a lounge area where they can just come and relax, but I also have a personal office where if they wanna come in and just talk on one-on-one -on -one, and I'll do my best to assess the situation and see what services I feel like that veteran may need. Now, we also take advantage of the uh, veterans crisis line from the, uh, the United States uh, Veterans Affairs. And we, we're just there. We, we, we're here for them. And a lot of times they just want to vent. Now I've had, I've had some students that come in and want to vent and hey, hey, that's what I'm here. Throw it on me, I'll take it. You know, mm -hmm. and if I see something that may need to be addressed then I will refer them to the appropriate authority. What about, I want to go back into this conversation about being there to listen and also helping to navigate across campus services that are available. What more do you need from us in terms of the ability to get students to and through, veterans to and through, from the perspective of us sitting here in Baton Rouge as policy um, and advocacy agency here at the Board of Regents? What, what else do we need to be thinking about in terms of supporting our veterans? Any thoughts? Well, if I could chime in on that, I think many times with our program, the way it's constructed, um, we need resources. We need a way of meeting the veteran where they are. And many of us don't have operating, operating um, budgets. So we have to kind of wing it. However, uh, we do the best we can. But I think if we could expand the program in some kind of way, as far as uh, some kind of way to reach the veteran where they are, because many times veterans, they suffer in silence and they try other things like medication, alcohol, drug abuse, and these leads to other um, undesirable, undesirable behaviors. So, if we had a way of maybe branching out instead of waiting for them to come to us, that would be my suggestion. Thank you. Tammy, thoughts? Yes, I believe that every school should have a veteran service coordinator that works strictly with our veterans. They go through the admission process. They go through the registration. They can be the certifying official to certify their benefits. And this would help eliminate some of the people that I don't know because a lot of our certifying officials they've got their hands full they're doing multiple jobs they're not just certifying our veterans and they don't understand the benefits like somebody who's been in Lebec Corps and worked with the benefits directly so if every every school had this one person they could work with the missions and just cater to our veterans just serve just the veterans population and the dependents and the children, I think that would make their transition a lot smoother. There'd be less issues because the it, when a veteran encounters an issue and a veteran will quit, they will not push through when they can, when they hit a wall. They just, they, they say, I'm done. I'm, I'm tired of fighting the system. And they back out. And I've seen that a lot, trying to fix some of the problems, keep them in school, keep them to that graduation. So it's called a Veterans Admissions Coordinator? That's what I would think it would That's be called. Awesome. 
Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Marty, your thoughts? Um, just a caveat of what Tammy said. Um, you know, another role that admissions play is recruiting. And yes. I think that's one area that universities kind of lack in is when they go to um, maybe a hiring event or an education event on a military installation, uh, such as Fort Polk or Camp Beauregard or something like that, they don't really know the language that they need to be talking to these soldiers and service members in. And if a service member is not comfortable with what they're hearing or what, you know, what's being presented to them, they're just not going to pursue it any farther. Um, mm -hmm. The same thing when they walk in on campus, you know, if they're not comfortable with what they see and, and they're not, um, you know, they don't, you don't necessarily have to like greet them at the door, but you know, if, if an admissions counselor doesn't know what GI bill benefits they can have, or if they're eligible for title 29 or their dependent is eligible for title 29, then they're just going to kind of give up and, and go on with their life at that point. Thank you for that. You, you mentioned families. I'm curious, just briefly, how much of the work you do is directly with a veteran versus a family member of a veteran? I would say mine is 50-50. I have a lot of spouses and dependents, but I also have a lot of veterans. So it's kind of 50-50. We have a, a total enrollment of what we call military connected students of about 156, I believe, and I believe 75 of them are actually veterans on benefits or active duty. Got it. Marty and Greg, is that the same for you? Yes. Mine's a higher number, but uh, I'm probably, I probably have more veterans, especially distance learning veterans than I do family members. It's probably about 60, 40 for me. Got it. And mine is pretty much dependence of veterans. Uh, most, of, most of the um, young men and women that I deal with are their parents or veterans. So it's mostly dependents. Got it. So one of the things that's really important to us, Greg touched on this, is making sure that higher education is uh, a destination for individuals who want to receive that life-changing credential, not enrolling. The, the power is in earning the credential and getting across the stage. So I'm curious about success stories. When you think about and you reflect on your work as a navigator, is there a story for each of you that sticks out and you, you think about that is a success story? And if more people knew about that, more people would be involved. Tammy, let me start with you. I've actually had two very, what I consider big success stories for me. One of them was a gentleman. Um, it was right after Hurricane Ida, which everybody knows we experienced last year and that devastated our community. Um, he came to me, he was in, I believe our electrician program. He came to me, he said, Miss Tammy, I'm gonna have to drop out. And I'm like, why do you have to drop out? What's going on with you? Hun? Just tell me what's going on. And he said, well, first of all, I lost my job. That was my first roadblock. I'm raising my six-year-old son by myself. My rent's behind, my electric payment's behind, and today on my way to school, my truck broke down. And I'm like, well, that's a lot going on. You know, um, I understand, but is there anything I can do? Let me, give me 48 hours and let me see what resources I can find to help you get through this hard spot before you sign that paper to withdraw. So he said, I'll give you 48 hours, but in 48 hours, I need to withdraw because I don't want more piling up on me. So I told him, okay. So within that four, actually within that 24 hours, I contacted a resource in our local community that would help with mortgage and electricity. They were able to go pay his mortgage for six months. They paid his electricity up for three months. I had all of his classes transferred to online temporarily while we worked on the vehicle situation. I contacted another one of my resources. They said, we just actually had a car donated to us. If he's willing to sign over the title to his truck, We've had this checked out. It runs great. We'll sign over the car to him. And then we can fix the drug for somebody else. The student came to me the next day because I gave him his contact information because he gave me permission to. And he was in tears. He said, I could never do this without you. He walked the stage in May with me. We both oh, walked. Oh, yes. So it was very much a big successful story for me. Because had he not done that, he would have he would have dropped out. Um, nice. and that, my second success story involves an older veteran. He contacted me this year. He's 79 years old. He's missing a leg. 
Um, he said, I'm bored at home. I see y'all offer a drone class. I want to take it. What kind of discounts do you offer for veterans? And I'm like, well, I'm not sure, mister, but um, let me contact our administration and see what we can do. The class was only like $499. I was almost willing to pay for it myself because of his age. He's a Purple Heart veteran and he just, he, he tickles me to death. Well, uh, I talked to our administration. They were able to find a GAP scholarship for him. And the gentleman was able to take the drone class and complete the drone class. And it just made him the happiest person alive to be able to complete That's great. that little bitty class just made, just made his day. So he's out somewhere flying drones. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic success stories. Thank you so much, Tammy. It speaks to the power of navigators and this idea that you never give up, right? You know. never give up. Yeah. Right. Marty, how about you? Um, so mine was, um, it was right before the 2021 academic year started. We, I was actually driving back from Baton Rouge from our uh, pre-service training in August, and I was already getting phone calls about a uh, student veteran. He was a first year student and was living in the dorms and was not meshing with the other students very well. Um, this is the one I was talking about before. He just... He, he didn't have any practical experience re interacting with non-veterans before. So a lot of his mannerisms came off as aggressive or threatening to them and the other students didn't know how to react to him. So I was, the chancellor was calling me and my site supervisor was calling me. Well, I got this guy in my office. I was able to sit down with him, just listen to his concerns, listen to what he was feeling and just talk to him. Say, look, you know, you, this isn't the military anymore. You kind of have to look at it from a different lens now. Um, and he went, got, I got him, uh, into the school counselor's office and I sat down with, with, uh, the vice chancellor for student engagement. And we were able to talk to him, you know, in a more formal setting also, I mean, nothing bad to him, no disciplinary actions or anything like that. It wasn't that serious. Uh, fast forward a year and a half now, uh, as a matter of fact, he was in my office today. Uh, he's straight A student. Dean, uh, uh, the chancellor's list. Uh, he was just elected to the student senate. Um, you know, has plans to get his undergraduate here at LSUA, go on to law school, and he came to me today and said he wants to run for governor eventually. So, uh, <laughs> awesome. and he's met a whole new group of friends. His wife goes to school here now. Um, it's just been a hundred and eighty degree turn from where he was when he first before the school year even started that year wow life-changing and thank goodness for that intervention of just saying hey let's talk about this and let's talk about um you know social norms and how do you assimilate and and be your very best right that's with really someone all taking took. the time absolutely that's fantastic and greg what about you success story uh, yes ma'am um, my very first year in 2019 um my site supervisor, Dr. Sly, had me to come in and introduce myself to his class, which is a college of business class. And of course, I polled the room and asked, are there any veterans or veteran spouses or veteran dependents in the room? And um, a few hands went up. But this one young man came to me after my presentation. And for some reason or another, I asked him, I said, well, how are you paying for your school? I don't know why that question came up. But I said, how are you paying for your school? He said, student loans. And I was like, you're doing what? So I found out that his father was 100% disabled. And we got the paperwork started and we got him off of the student loan bandwagon. And now he's going to school free of charge. He's getting the, the chapter 35 benefits that he was already eligible for. And now he's my work study student. So I'm going to make sure he gets through the process and watch him go across that stage in another. Um, I know we are uh, closing out this fantastic conversation. I really am grateful as we think about Veterans Day and all of the sacrifice and all of the service and the men and women who continue to do amazing things on behalf of our country. We're just grateful. But I'm curious for the individual navigators, for you, Tammy, Greg, and Marty, what does Veterans Day mean to you? For me, Tammy, Dr. 
for me, Dr. Reed, Veterans Day is a time that we honor those that have given the sacrifice to our country. They've sacrificed family time, they've sacrificed their own time, and they serve our country to protect us from any kind of source that could do it, knowing that they could lose their life in the process. Everyone that goes and serves knowing they could perform that ultimate sacrifice, but they're willing to give it to us. So we take Veterans Day as a day that we honor them, whether it's a free meal or a service or a ceremony. It's a day to give back to them because we could never give them enough for what they've done for us. Thank you. Marty, as a retired veteran, what does it mean to you? I had this big long answer for this, but I'm gonna <laughs> sum it up. Um, over the years, I think my, my vision of Veterans Day has evolved, um, but essentially it's, it's a day where we respectfully honor a small population of our citizens who have put their lives on hold in order to serve a greater purpose. Um, and that's really what it comes down to is they served a greater purpose for little to no recognition. Uh, so, you know, whatever we can do on Veterans Day to, to even just kind of make up that um, really helps out a lot, makes them feel much better. Thank you. Very well said. Definitely a greater purpose. Greg? Yes, Dr. Reed, um, if I could quote my last year's keynote speaker, Honorable Patrick Jefferson, and it's kind of the way I go about my business. Far as I'm concerned, every day is Veterans Day. Every single day is Veterans Day. That's the way I live my life. And um, I'm of service to every veteran. When I see them in the grocery store, thank you for your service. You know, a lot of them, you kind of surprise them because they've never heard that before. So, like I say, every day is Veterans Day, and I am especially proud to be able to have gotten Congresswoman Julia Ledlow for our Veterans Day program. If I could plug that in, I think yeah. it's going to be a grand thing. She is a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, and that's a wonderful opportunity for our university because uh, we were just talking about funding. So, um, every day is Veterans Day. I'll just end it that way for me. Very well said, and and Greg and Tammy and uh, Martin, we are so proud of the work that you're doing as navigators. You make a difference every day on behalf of veterans and their families, and on behalf of a, a very grateful state. Thank you so very much uh, for what you do and for joining us today for Louisiana's Got Talent. Uh, this podcast is a monthly podcast produced by Louisiana Board of Regents. Uh, to learn more about our work, please visit uh, Regents uh, website at www.laregents.edu or visit us on social media. Uh, I'm Kim Hunter-Reed, very grateful to celebrate and salute our veterans and our veteran navigators. Uh, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.